Well, from the St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio, this is the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. We're happy that you're watching this. We'd be even happier if you could be with us. We miss you. We love you. We need you. We'd like to see you here in our pews. Today, the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost, it's November the 16th, we have a guest pastor today. As Pastor Pollock is on vacation, and the guest pastor is Pastor Katrina Hawkins Bowles. Pastor Katrina Hawkins Bowles is our guest pastor today. We're at the corner of Wittenberg and Columbia, and if you come and join us any Sunday, we'd ask you to ask Jesus to come into your heart, be born again every day. We Lutherans believe that we're born again every day. As we repent, we confess, we acknowledge Jesus as our personal Savior, ask him to come into our hearts. He is Lord of our lives. We invite you to come, be with us. We miss you, we love you, we need you. Be a member of our church, worship with us. Today is 23rd, Sunday after Pentecost. We have Holy Communion today. Their opening hymn is a hymn from the Sacred Harp, very, very uh, in the United States, an old way of singing. The processional hymn, Lord Whose Love and Humble Service is from the Sacred Harp, around 1900s, special way of singing. And it's a very, uh, everybody sings it a loud volume with a lot of parts. Professional hymn, Lord, processional hymn, Lord, whose love and humble service. We start out with confession and forgiveness. As we repent, we ask Jesus to come into our heart as our personal Savior. We have our apostolic greeting, the Kyrie, in which we acknowledge that God has mercy on us for our sins, that he makes us into victors and not victims, that we are victorious over sin, death, and the grave because Jesus died on the cross to save us from sin. Then we have the hymn of praise, the prayer of the day, First reading, the psalm, everything follows the same theme. And the theme today is, Righteous God, our merciful master, you own the earth and all its peoples. This week at our church, we have the Yuletide Festival. Please join us on Thursday for lunch. We have special lunches. We have a dinner on Thursday night with a ham loaf that you'll love. And on Friday night is the auction at 6.30. On Saturday morning is the breakfast with Santa. So come join us for the Yuletide Festival, Christian Fellowship, and earning money for our church, for our Lord Jesus Christ. Part of our service today, we have special music, All Who Love and Serve Your City. And then the Nicene Creed, we always do the Nicene Creed when we have Holy Communion. Prayers of intercession, prayer of intercession is a powerful prayer. Jesus died to establish his church here on earth. And he allows us to pray all together as part of his body. It's a powerful prayer, the prayer of intercession. Then we have the offering, the offering prayer. First Thanksgiving, the Sanctus, Holy, Holy, Holy. Eucharistic prayer, the Lord's Prayer, the Lamb of God. Distribution and blessing. And we believe in the real presence of Jesus Christ as he died so that he could be with us forever. The post-communion prayer, the benediction. Recessional hymn, I want to walk as a child. Listen to the new pastor. As folks are still milling around and finding their ways to the pews, let's talk about some announcements. First and foremost, my name is Pastor Katrina Hawkins Bowles, and it is my pleasure to worship with you on this beautiful Sunday <coughs> cold morning. We do have several announcements in the bulletin, and if you saw this order form, if y'all still y'all see this, this is y'all from the status. So if you have not ordered it yet, there is a deadline. It must be in by December 8th. And all the information is on here about cost. So make sure you all get this in by the deadline if you are interested in poinsettias for this Christmas season. Also, the Yuletide wreaths, this order form is also in the bulletin. And I understand there's a Yuletide festival that will be coming up. And people are excited about that. The gym has been redecorated. If you all noticed all the beautiful Christmas <coughs> trees and things that are going on downstairs in celebration of this Christmas season. And there, of course, are a few other things. If you are also looking at your bulletin, as I am, there's reminders, news, blankets, scarves, coats, gloves. All of these things are being collected for the rainbow table. Christmas and sign up and distribution of the Lutheran Christmas food baskets will be done at Salvation Army this year. And the Midman family would like to invite anyone who is alone or would like to have dinner in fellowship to attend their Thanksgiving dinner here at the church on Thanksgiving Day, 
1 p.m., November 27th, and they are trying to plan on the amount of food to have so that if you are interested in being there, please give Dolores a call, and her number is in the bulletin. As well, they need a worship assistant and a reader for the Thanksgiving service, which will be held <coughs> on November 25th as a Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. So if you are available to help with that service, please see the, either the worship committee or the pastor or whoever else is in charge. And you're saying, do you have announcements? I do. Thank you. We do have a guest minister. Friday, Saturday. Uh, we would appreciate everybody that has signed up to come. We will be selling uh, tickets for the uh, Money Tree, which is $560. And then we also have a gift certificate from uh, Myers, which is uh, $200. So they'll be having that. We'll have the usual cheese table. Uh, we will have uh, <coughs> and we hope that anybody that has <coughs> contributed in the past will help come and this with the uh, baked goods. Uh, Linda's going to be in charge of that. Uh, Linda doing the camera work today. And uh, if you have signed up, please, please show up at uh, whatever time you sign up or any time else for that matter because we can always use help. Uh, we have a lot of booths set up like normal. We will be having meals on Thursday and Friday. And uh, Saturday, Santa Claus will be here for any of the children of, that, uh, or grandchildren if you want to bring them. And uh, we hope to have a great Yuletide Festival. The money, receipts, are going to help the church uh, to keep us in uh, an open status so that we can keep the doors open for any services that we have. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any other announcements? With those being our announcements, let us continue with our worship, worship with our confession and forgiveness. Please stay. This hymn was written by Albert Bailey, who lived 1901 to 1984. It's from the Sacred Harp. The Sacred Harp is a special kind of singing in the Appalachian area. It's all at high volume and a lot of tunes, a lot of different parts.
You own the earth and all its peoples. And you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and with wisdom. And prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of our scripture. Good morning. The first reading of the Connie Singleton is reading the scripture. singing our psalm now responsibly.
brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night, when they say, there is peace and security, that sudden destruction will come upon them, as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we have the gospel being read by the pastor as he's walking up the pulpit to show our great respect for the gospel of Jesus Christ and Jesus is there beside her. We're singing the gospel acclamation. St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. This is November the 16th, the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. Where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. 
pastor is Pastor Katrina Hawkins Bowles, substituting for Pastor Pollock, who's out of town. Thank you. 
Jesus' birth. And in our preparation for Jesus' birth, we get scriptures about preparing us for Jesus coming back. And Paul shows us what to do. He says, verse 8, But since we belong to the day, let us be self-controlled. I have an NIV version. Self-controlled. Putting on faith and love as a breastplate. Faith and love. See, one of the things that, that we are in the midst of is constant spiritual warfare. Constant spiritual warfare. If you remember the Lutheran National Anthem, Mighty Fortress is Our God, Luther talks about the devil as this old satanic foe. That's constantly making us have to choose between what's right and what's wrong and affecting our minds as a poison. And so Paul says we can combat this by being self-controlled, putting on faith and love as a breastplate. Now we know that a breastplate protects your special organs, your heart, your lungs, all this stuff up there that if you hurt, you're dead. Okay? That's what a breastplate does. Paul says we're supposed to put on faith and love. Now Paul has already defined faith as the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. That's what we're supposed to put on as protection for our hearts. Protection for our spirit. Protection for our ability to even breathe. And love. Now we know about love. We're not talking about the love that we have for pizza or the love that we have for a particular show or ice cream or chocolate. Any of those wonderful things that we love. We are talking about the all incompassing, the all amazing, the altruistic, agape love that God has entrusted to us to share with this world. That's the love that Paul's talking about. God gave me this definition of love a few years back. God said that love means being vulnerable enough to allow someone else to become more than what they already are. God has called us to be in relationship, for us encouraging and building up and strengthening one another. God has not called any of us to be idols. And so when God says, you know, has Paul tell us to put on faith and love as a breastplate, that's how we are supposed to do with each other. That's how we're supposed to treat each other. That love thing. We know that those are the greatest commandments. Am I right? God told us to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your, come on, and with all your, and to love your neighbors. He said that those commandments were more important than the Ten Commandments. And Paul has reminded us that this is what we put on for protection. Love protects us. Because God is love. And then my brother Paul, I love Paul, he continues on saying, and the hope of salvation as a helmet. The hope of salvation as a helmet. Now we know that the helmet protects our head, our brain will say our mind. And Paul is reminding us that this hope of salvation, this is where, where we're supposed to think. Our lens by which we see this 
And we're trying to figure out what do we do to prepare for God, prepare for the kingdom of heaven, prepare for the fill of fulfillment of every promise. We get a chance to be a part of God's design by being love, by sharing love, by bringing wholeness to this world, by bringing light and peace and hope. This world is full of darkness. This world is full of pain. And yet you are the balm in Gilead. You are the bringer of light. The bringer of peace. You are God's purpose for this world. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and sing our hymn of the day. All who love and serve your city. Hymn number 724. Love and Serve Your City, written by Eric Bountley, 1917-1982, follows our theme of love one another and build one another up.
the Father and Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and continued to live in you. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death in the Spirit. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiping the Lord God, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, we are silent before your just judgment of evil, but we remember that you have not destined us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us that we might live with him. Stir up faith, hope, and love in your church, that it may be busy with the work of your kingdom until that great and terrible day. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for our Bishop Suzanne Dillamont, all pastors and teachers, and all who proclaim your law and gospel. Give them boldness to preach your word, using well the treasure that has been entrusted to them, and grant that your people may hear it and take it to heart. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, look with favor upon your suffering people, especially those who are persecuted, tortured, and killed for the name of Jesus Christ. Grant them patience and peace in their suffering, boldness to confess your name, and help the whole church to stand with them in constant prayer. And by your great power, bring their persecutors to repentance and faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, Grant to our world leaders the wisdom to lead with justice. Be with the members of our armed forces at home and abroad. Grant that all citizens of our country be noble in purpose and honest in our dealings with one another. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, even as your just judgment is upon evil in the world, remember mercy and spare those who suffer in places of war, disease, injustice, and chronic poverty. Speedily relieve their suffering. Be with all who work for peace and order, health and safety, just and fair economic practices, and religious freedom. Give us all your blessing that we may praise you in true security. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, give to the sick, the dying, the grieving, those who fear your wrath, and those who despair of your love, the true peace of your presence and the healing touch of your spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, in the great and terrible day you will deliver your people, we give you thanks for those who have died in your peace, especially those dear to us. Help us, like the faithful before us, to follow you in faith, cling to the forgiveness offered in your Son, serve you with zeal and gladness, and enter into the joy of our Master and friend. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We give God our offerings. You may be seated. Now it's time to receive our offerings. We're happy to have you here today. We hope that you'll be able to come and worship with us in purpose, in uh, person. We love you, we need you, we miss you. We'd like for you to come and, if you're able, 
fill up our pews, help us worship God. We ask you to take Jesus into your heart today, to take virtual Holy Communion, to ask Jesus to save you, to repent, to believe, to confess, to love God, love your neighbor. Just say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart today. We believe that you're born again every day. God will be with you. You will be the victor, not the victim. God will be with you and help you and never leave you. This is November the 16th. This is the uh, 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. Our lesson today is put on the breastplate of love, put on the helmet. You can get through everything. You can be the victor. And you remember that Satan is our enemy, but God has his fist against our enemy. He has open hands to us as we can receive his blessing and his favor. All we have to do is ask and receive it. We have several announcements today. Yuletide Festival is coming up Thursday, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Friday, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. And uh, the Rainbow Table, as usual, will serve 8,000 meals a month to the homeless. Saturday, 12 noon, 9 a.m. to 12 noon is Yuletide Festival. We invite you to come to Sunday School. We're having skating next Sunday. You can look and now see the acolyte is holding, the minister's holding the uh, trays up to God. And we have our ushers today. And after this, we'll have Holy Communion. We believe in the real presence that God has promised to be with us forever. Christ was betrayed. 
you. Is Jesus is present with us today, and He's the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, who frees us from the sin, death, and the grave. We're receiving the most wonderful gift that we can have: Jesus Christ within us, alive, to be with us, to sustain us, to help us to love one another. We are born again as we believe Jesus will come into our heart. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God, who falls afresh on us as we feel the living presence within us. Jesus is within us, his real presence. As God's angel has taken these elements up to heaven, blessed them, brought them back down to us, and now we receive them as the living Christ. When he left, he left this wonderful gift for us so that he could be with us forever. We can be victors rather than victims that we can be united against the enemy, the wicked, that we can be born again, that we can receive all the favor from God. All we have to do is to ask Jesus to come into our heart. He, re he comes in through Holy Communion, a wonderful gift. We see our guest pastor. She's preparing the elements. Please stand. <clears throat>
number 850. This is written by Kathleen Thomerson. She was born in 1934. I want to walk as a child of the light, <coughs> letting us know how we should walk, protected <coughs> by the armor and the helmet with God. Thank you for watching St. John's on YouTube. Tune in next <coughs> Sunday. You tune in any time. All you have to do is click us up on Google, type in YouTube, St. John's Lutheran, Springfield, Ohio, and share this with others. Our church offers a Christian school for ages three and four, nursery and pre-K. You can call the school office for more information. Thank you for joining us in our worship service this day. We pray that you have praised God and you've been born again. That you invited Jesus to come into your heart. We miss you. We love you. We want you to come help us here at St. John. All who are listening to this, please share it. Remember, you can help save a person, become a victor rather than a victim, and obtain eternal life. I'm Dr. Sally Abbott, the announcer, the uh, videographer is Linda Fox, and Jim Popfish is his assistant. I hope and I pray that God will continue to bless you and keep you all your days. We pray for you. Continue to pray for us.